This is the history of the universe in a nutshell. A third grader can learn. This is what they teach in graduate level physics at the university. When we were talking about the Big Bang, the big expansion, at high energies, high temperatures, small volume, the quarks that were around were top. Antimatter particles that were created also. There's an anti top. It's T with a bar. There's an anti bottom called B bar. Now there's a force carrier involved. It's called a tau particle. It's a Greek letter tau. With that, a tau neutrino. There's an anti tau, an anti tau neutrino. These have been discovered now in Chicago, the Fermi Lab. As the universe expanded and got cooler, the next row of particles were known as charm. force carrier for this second generation is called the muon. It's a negative electromagnetic charge. These were the first particles discovered. Strange. Then charm. Then the bottom. And then finally the top. Now for all matter that we know of, constitutes the universe and the earth and life as we know it has cooled to just the right temperature, just the right volume. All the conditions we have the up quark and the down quark. The electron is the force carrier. Up quark has a positive charge of plus two thirds. Now, when Murray Gell-Mann proposed this at Caltech in the early 60s, fractional charges were unheard of. A more massive down quark has a negative one-third electric charge. An electron has a full negative one. It was never believed that we could have fractional charges for electric and magnetic forces. So, to create matter, Quarks are not known to exist by themselves. Combinations that we find as the expansion went on stars make elements. This is what they seem to miss when they're teaching astronomy and chemistry, don't seem to get it. Protons, the predominant particle in the universe, two up quarks. And a down quark. This proton is what's also known as hydrogen. Okay, to do the fractional charges here, plus two thirds for one up quark, plus two thirds for the other bottom up quark, the down quark minus one third. If we add these fractional electric charges, two-thirds, two-thirds, it's a positive four-thirds. If you 
minus one third, you end up with a positive one. That's the electromagnetic charge on a proton. This is the hydrogen nucleus. There's so many different names for this. Everybody gets confused from fourth graders to fourth year chemistry students. I'm filling in the blanks. This is what's not taught. The sun can make helium. Well, how does it do it? Ask a physicist. They don't, won't be able to explain it this simple. Two up quarks and a down quark. Hydrogen protons from the gravity of the sun as they're fused together the sun will make antimatter in the first reaction in the core. At 15 million degrees, you're able to get two protons coming together, and the result, the energy from the up becomes a down. Now you have two down quarks and an up quark. This is the neutron. This is what the sun is making. Before it can make helium, before any stars can make other heavier elements, you need neutrons. Neutrons are more massive. We'll draw it bigger here, okay? What holds these quarks together are called gluons. Each quark gets a gluon. There's three for that, three for that. So here's one, two. Three, four, five, six. Let's make a cartoon character out of this. Put some eyeballs in there. This is called the neutron bunny. Third graders have been drawing this for 10 years now. Helium has two protons, two neutrons. It can have one neutron too, but 99% of the time, what's called an alpha particle, is two protons, two neutrons. The sun has to make a neutron first. So what the sun is doing is it's making neutrons. Have you ever heard that? Ask astronomers, ask physicists. They won't tell you that it's making neutrons. Okay, this is the big crux of the problem with education nowadays. Chemists learn the periodic table. You cannot learn the periodic table without learning how the stars make elements. The chart of the nuclides will show the proton and neutron ratio. Elements are numbers of protons. You have to hear this a hundred times before it makes sense. So, back in the history of the universe, as the Big Bang expansion, elements cooled. You had all these hydrogen protons out here. Now gravity began fusing to make neutrons. Now I'll have to show you how that's done. Okay, inside the sun. You've got the sun burning bright. The up quark from the proton. To make more mass, this goes back to Einstein's equation that you all, everybody memorizes but nobody knows what it's about. E equals mc squared. Okay, the energy, 15 million degrees. I'm right here. 15 million degree Kelvin the core of the sun is able to fuse the protons to the point where the up quark receives enough energy to increase its mass. The up quark becoming a down quark draw it bigger you will see these letters the same size in any chart in the world draw it bigger the down is more massive than the up the charge, electromagnetic charge on the up quark was plus two thirds. The charge on a down quark, minus one third. So, conservation of energy, conservation of matter, these go back to Newtonian physics.
This is modern, high energy <laughs> particle physics. Conservation rules still follow. Electromagnetic, plus two thirds to minus one third, there has to be a positive charge lost somewhere. A positive one is carried away by what's called an anti-electron. This is antimatter in the sun. This is not science fiction. I go to conferences all over the country. Graduate students, PhDs, think antimatter is something only on Star Trek. The sun creates antimatter. The first reaction that has happened. So, a positron. An electron with a positive charge has to also be emitted. Now this is antimatter to offset the matter that was created with the down quark. So we've got a conservation of matter, we've got a conservation of electromagnetic charge. If there's time I'll explain to you, electricity and magnetism are the same thing. <laughs> This is the history of the universe in a nutshell. A third grader can learn. This is what they teach in graduate level physics at the university. When we were talking about the Big Bang, the big expansion, at high energies, high temperatures, small volume, the quarks that were around were top. Antimatter particles that were created also. This is anti top. It's T with a bar. There's an anti bottom called B bar. Now there's a force carrier involved. It's called a tau particle. It's a Greek letter tau. With that, a tau neutrino. There's an anti tau, an anti tau neutrino. These have been discovered now in Chicago, the Fermi Lab. As the universe expanded and got cooler, the next row of particles were known as charm. The force carrier for this second generation is called the muon. It's a negative electromagnetic charge. These were the first particles discovered. Strange. Then charm. Then the bottom, and then finally the top. Now for all matter that we know of, that constitutes the universe and the earth and life as we know it, has cooled to just the right temperature, just the right volume. All the conditions, we have the up quark and the down quark. The electron is the force carrier. The up quark has a positive charge of plus two thirds. Now, when Murray Gell-Mann proposed this at Caltech in the early 60s, Fractional charges were unheard of. A more massive down quark has a negative one-third electric charge. An electron has a full negative one. It was never believed that we could have fractional charges.